I, the best way for me to describe it is up until that point in time, I just knew, I just knew I was a scumbag and putting this whole four step together. It was like the entire Megilla of every mistake I had ever made, every problem I ever had. So, you know, that didn't really help my self-esteem doing the four step. You know, when I shared it with them, it, it, it was like a burden. It was, it was like an anvil was lifted off of me. It just, it just seemed to me that if I could admit all this stuff, I could move away from it. I could change. Well, hello, friends of Bill W. and other friends. You have landed on Sober Speak. My name is John M. I am an alcoholic, and we are glad you are all here, especially newcomers. Newcomers, that is, both to recovery as a whole and newcomers to this podcast. Sober Speak is a podcast about recovery centered around the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. My job here on Sober Speak is simple. My job is to provide a platform to the amazing stories of recovery all around us. Consider Sober Speak, if you will, your meeting between meetings. Please remember, we do not speak for AA or any 12 step community. We represent only ourselves. We are here to share our experience, strength, and hope with those who wish to come along for the ride. Take what you want and leave the rest at the curb for the trash man to pick up. Greetings from Studio AA, deep in the heart of Texas. That was the voice of our friend, Mr. Chris S., that you heard at the beginning of this here episode number 346 of Sober Speak, and you are going to hear so much more from him in just a moment, but first things first, this here episode is made possible by Dave. What you may ask did Dave do? Well, he ventured to our humble little uh, website, www.soberspeak.com. Calm. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and found the little yellow donate tab to make a, a contribution. So thank you so much, Dave. This here episode is coming right out to you. We are going to get right into Mr. Chris S. today. Uh, Chris S., this is one is called Step Five of Alcoholics Anonymous. Chris is from Blairstown, New Jersey, and he is back with us again. We always love having Chris at the microphone. Uh, Chris, Chris recently celebrated 30, not Chris, Chris recently celebrated 34 years in Alcoholics Anonymous, and we take a deep step into all that is step five of AA. Um, we discuss the range of experiences that people have with the fifth step. Uh, as we know, it's not the same for everyone. Uh, we just, uh, Chris discusses the, the promises of the fifth step on page 75. The principle of uncover, discover, and discard. And he references, once again, his sponsors, which I love uh, the names he has for not only his sponsors, but so, uh, many of the people around him. Uh, two of his sponsors are Fish Food Phil and his current sponsor, Spiritual Brad, is what he calls him. Um, Brad has been on the podcast a couple of times. That's Brad L. for those of you who have uh, heard him before. But anyway... Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Chris S. regarding Step 5, and we will have plenty of listener feedback at the end of this here episode. Enjoy. Okay, everybody, so we are back at the microphone here on Sober Speak with the one and only Mr. Chris S. drinking his soda pop there. Is that what, what are you drinking, Chris? So it's, it's, uh, it's Coke Zero. Uh, no caffeine, no, uh, uh, no sugar. 
Oh, well, what's the use of it if it doesn't have caffeine or sugar? I, I'm not a soda guy, but okay, whatever. We'll, we'll just go past that. <laughs> anyway, Chris, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, give your sobriety date if you wish, and tell people where you live, please. Sure, sure. Uh, my name's Chris. I am an alcoholic. I'm a member uh, in good standing of Alcoholics Anonymous. I just celebrated 34 years last month, and I live in a, a little town called Blairstown, New Jersey. Blairstown. We've talked about this before. There, It's famous for the, uh, like some movie. Which movie is Fr it? Friday the 13th <laughs> movie was filmed there. So, so they have like Friday the 13th day, and everybody brings meat cleavers. <laughs> it's uh it's it's really something to see oh that's great okay well since i talked to you last i know that um you went to cal you've probably been to other places but i know for sure that you went to california because i like bill c had like some sort of uh workshop or something out there tell me about that and what you were doing out there what an experience Experience that was that was the Hermosa Beach Men's Stag Retreat. So, so in Southern California, there's a lot of men's meetings with hundreds of members, right? And they'll ha and, and some of them will have retreats. And we had this retreat up at the center uh, in Malibu, overlooking the water and the mountains. It, 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 and it it was crazy. I did know my friend from uh, my my friend from uh, Aspen, Colorado, Jack W. and we, we got to talk the whole weekend and very few people even walked out. So, so it was, you know, it was, it was pretty, but what an experience that was. I, I, you know, I got to see my sponsor, Brad, who, you know, right. Mm -hmm. He lives in Santa Monica. I, I, I stayed with him a night and then uh, went up to, to Malibu to do this retreat. It was just, if there's anybody out there that's never done retreats or never gone to convention weekends or something, just give it a try. Uh, it, it's something that really, really adds a lot of value to my life, these things. So when you, so just so people understand, like when you went to this retreat and your job was to talk, basically, what are you talking about? Do you do it all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Do you just do Saturday? Explain to people how that works. Well, Friday night, um, we each had an hour, Jack and I had an hour and we, and we basically told our story and went over some step one stuff. You know, how did we land in Alcoholics Anonymous? Right. And then the next day it was, uh, it was basically a step workshop. Uh, and we, we each, we had five, uh, five hours worth of talks on the steps. And, and then Saturday night, uh, group members came up and did 15 minute pitches. And then, and then on Sunday we finished it up with, uh, with two talks each. And, um, it was, it was remarkable. I, you know, if you would have told me in the, in the 1980s that, that a group of people would sit there and listen to me talk without interrupting for a whole weekend, <laughs> I just, I just wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed something like that is, is, is possible. <laughs> You know, but, uh, but this thing called, this thing called recovery has, has gotten me excited and I've paid, I've paid pretty close attention to, uh, to, to the details. And, and every once in a while I get invited to, to, uh, uh, to share on those details, which, uh, I take as a, as a very, very deep honor. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I did talk to Brad, I think last week or the week before, and he had mentioned that he had gotten to see you when you came up there and how much he enjoyed that. And I think he dropped you off or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. And he was describing the, the place as well, uh, where you in Malibu that you were speaking. Now, when you were in Malibu, did you happen to see Barbie or Ken? I I did not, but but looking down from this retreat center, we saw, we saw th we saw things like Dick Van Dyke's house, Mel Mel Gibson's house, uh, James Cameron's house, uh, you know, uh, a whole lot of um, uh, uh, you know you know accomplished people yeah. live in this valley uh, in Malibu, and and, and we're, we're kind of like up on this peak, looking down at everything. It was it was pretty crazy. Very nice, very nice.
Okay, so let's turn a corner. We've been through the first four steps with you is what it comes down to. And now we're up at step five. And um, we're going to start at step five. I don't know how far we'll get. Yeah. Uh, and um, we'll, we'll just do that. So step five, admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. Now, you can go back and kind of bridge it from that step four, if you want, and what we covered in that step four, um, but I'll just uh, open the floor to you. What do you have to say? Well, you know, what What you learn, hopefully, in Alcoholics Anonymous is your problems aren't coming at you, they're coming from you. <laughs> and and your, your alcoholism is a part of... Um, your thinking mind, how, how you, how you think. So in this 12 step world of recovery, um, as you start moving through the steps, so first you, you have to, you have to become convinced you're in trouble. You know, the crazy, crazy thing is, John, is so many people are dying of alcoholism and, and, and they, they just don't, they don't give the devil his due. And, and so in step one, there's a lot of information in the book Alcoholics Anonymous that that uh, uh, that kind of paints you to in, into a corner. This is how much trouble you're in. This is what you're up against. You're, you're up against an obsession of the mind coupled with an allergy of the body, where, where practically every area of your life is, is unmanageable uh, because of the way you've been managing it, and and that's that's a heavy lift, right? So so. Um, Sponsors are really helpful. Uh, uh, meetings are really helpful for getting us to come to realize just how much trouble we're in. You know, step two is is coming to believe that uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is is going to be a solution. Uh, uh, a relationship with God is going to be a solution. Step three is is making a decision to seek that solution. Like a die, like the dying man, you know, the drowning man seizing a life preserver, kind of, uh, kind of seizing this, this, this process of recovery, and and and, in, and then in step four, it, it gets us into some really, really deep self reflection. Like, okay, uh, I've admitted my life is unmanageable. What does that mean? You know, I've been managing my life forever. Thank you. What, what, what exactly does that mean? Well, it, it, it means, it means the way you react to life. It, it, it means your belief systems. It means your emotional, um, health. It's all impacted, you know, by this thing called alcoholism and it manifests in certain ways that cause your failure at life. And one of the ways it causes your failure at life is you're always pissed off. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Everything from road rage to, you know, broken relationships and bosses that are idiots and, and family members that don't understand and all that, all that stuff is, is, is uh, manifestations of self that really, really is our alcoholism. And, and then we have to understand that we, we suffer from a, a kind of anxiety. They call it fear in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's not being able to be where we need to be doing what we need to be doing because we're uncomfortable with it. Right. So, so I, I was riddled with anxiety when I first showed up. It was hard for me to walk into the meeting. Everything made me uncomfortable. I just wanted to go home all the time. Just leave me alone. Don't call me. <laughs> you, you know, you know, I, I just, I was backing away from life. And, and the book Alcoholics Anonymous says that we're retreating from life. And, and it's because of this fear slash anxiety. And then I need to look at how have I been treating people? All of this is really, really deep self-reflection. We went over a lot of it, uh, you know, in the last podcast. And, and I, I, you know, I have to ask myself a, a, a bunch of very pointed questions about my behavior in relationships. I, I you know, I, I'm selfish. I'm dishonest. Uh, you know, I unjustifiably arouse suspicion and bitterness. I mean, there's all this kind of stuff that happens in my intimate relationships that happen in basically all my relationships. And, and I start to see that, you know, I haven't really been coming off as a real person, you know, in step five, it, it, it basically says, you, you know, we're, we're creating a false narrative for ourselves. We're, you know, 
we're living a double life. You know, the life that's going on in our head is much different than, than how we want to portray things outwardly. And, and all of this is part of, uh, part of our alcoholism. It's why we, it's why we look for, um, anesthesia of one kind or another, whether it's drugs or alcohol. We look for that anesthesia because living this way, living in a, in an unmanageable life that, that's prey to misery and depression and anxiety and resentment and fear, living in that kind of a life is so uncomfortable that, you know, we, you know, we, we have reached out for alcohol or for drugs time and time again, just, just to get some peace. Uh, and, and what this recovery process is, is about uncovering, discovering and discarding. So I need to, I need to really see what the truth about my emotional and spiritual nature is. And that comes from step four. Now that immediately after that, they want me to share this, you know, um, uh, you know, Honestly with myself, I need to, I need to really be honest in, in this self assessment. I need to share it with another person and I need to share it with God. Uh, I even know people that share it first in the mirror, go to a church and share it and, and then, and then share it with a person because that's kind of what the instruction says, right? That, you know, they're so specific with the details. I, I think, I think a one and done is, is okay. It's certainly been okay with me. Yeah. So anyway, you know what? I haven't actually given that a ton of thought before in that I, I get the admitting to myself and admitting to another human being, which is really the piece that people talk about, but it does say admit to God. I, I mean, is do you think like like you said is it a one and done when i'm talking to somebody else that's kind of admitting it to myself and to god or is that a separate piece to the puzzle you know i think it's i think it's what kind of a conception do you have of of god is is god all knowing you you, you know it, it's god a part of this process and i believe i believe uh, i believe god is if you see god as is, is some other that, that needs to be petitioned to, you know, in a religious environment, maybe, maybe you need to, to go do that. I, I think it has to do with, you know, what, what is your, what is your conception of, of God? But personally, this was the first time I was really honest with somebody. I started to really trust fish food, Phil. He was my first sponsor. Good stuff. Gary was my second sponsor and spiritual Brad, who, you know, is my third. I've had three sponsors, right? And I don't and, know why they all. I don't know why they all have nicknames. I, and remind us why fish was called fish again. Fish, fish food, Phil. He he, uh, he's a high high level. He was my first one. High level seafood consultant. So when supermarket uh, chains and places like that wanted to improve or put together a seafood department, he was the guy that they would hire as a consultant and he would build it for you. He'd build your whole seafood department. He'd know, he'd know where in South America to buy the fish. He'd know, you know, what kind of, what kind of units you need to have for refrigeration. I mean, he, you know, he was the guy. So, um, so, uh, uh, you know, fish, fish food, Phil was, was, uh, was what, at least what I called him. I don't think anybody else uses these <laughs> nicknames except me. You know, I, I nickname him, I think, but, but anyway, Phil. anyway, yeah, fish, fish, fish. He, he saved my life. Listen, he was so kind and he, and, and he understood how damaged I was. And he knew that my, my feelings were really brittle. So he, he made extreme pains not to, you know, shame me or make me feel worse than I already did. You know, he was a very compassionate sponsor. And he, and he started saying, you know, you need to do your four step. And, and Chris, we need, we need to do a fifth step. He started to, to tell me this and I had about six months or so, you know, so, uh, so I put together, I put together a four step and, uh, and I did my fifth step with him and, and John, John, it was, so, so all I all I can say is this: everybody has their own experience. Some people will say, "Well, I did a fist step and nothing happened." Some people will say, "I did a fist step and that you know I had a spiritual awakening." I mean, I mean, there's there's you know uh, there's a range of experiences that you can have, and I think that has to do with how fearless and thorough you are. But my experience with this was uh, when I walked into my first fist step, my head was down. 
I, I, the best way for me to describe it is up until that point in time, I just knew, I just knew I was a scumbag and putting this whole four step together. It was like the entire Megillah of every mistake I had ever made, every problem I ever had. So, you know, that didn't really help my self-esteem doing the four step, but you know, when I shared it with them, it, 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 it was like a burden. It was like, it was like an anvil was lifted off of me. Um, it just, it just seemed to me that if I could admit all this stuff, I could move away from it. I could change, you know, the biggest lie I was told when I, when I was young was a tiger uh, never changes his stripes. You, you're, you're not going to be able to change once you're a jerk, always a jerk. I mean, I used to hear all that stuff, right? Well, well, the 12 steps is an action program to bring about change. And the change it brings about are in your belief systems, in your emotional and spiritual state, and in your reaction to life. There's there's just a, a fundamental full-blown change that happens. And all of a sudden, my problems aren't coming at me anymore. I really don't have any problems. I have I have challenges, but I don't have problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what a problem is, John? A problem is a situation that I define myself as a problem. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> I've now defined it and now it's a problem. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Problems are of my own making. So yeah, there's challenges. You, you and I know that life, life slaps you across the face every once in a while, mm -hmm. but my reaction to life is not, oh man, that's a problem. That's a real problem. Yeah. That's not my reaction anymore. My reaction is usually, you know, what, what are the next steps I need to take, you know, for things to get better? And that's, that's a, that's a, a fundamental rearrangement in my reaction to life, right? Cause I used to love being a victim. So, so anyway, I'll tell you the story about, uh, about, uh, fish food fill. He, he says, okay, you're going to do your fifth step and we're going to go to the park and you're going to bring your, bring the paper. You know, we're going to go to the park and we're going to walk around the park and you're going to do your fifth step. Now he brought his dogs because he liked to, to multitask, right? <laughs> so, so, so he's got his dogs running around and we're walking around this park. And, and I'm reading on, you know, I resent my brother and, you know, and, I, and I stole from my boss and, blah, 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 you know, and I'm going through all this stuff, right? And, uh, and my head is down and I get done and he goes, is that it? And I go, yeah. And he goes, huh? He goes, that's not so bad. You know, we can work with that. <laughs> and I was horrified. I, you know, I, I thought, I thought that, that admitting something like that to somebody would fundamentally change my relationship with them for the worst. They would now see me as a real scumbag, right? But that's not what Phil did. Phil understood that I had the characteristics of an alcoholic. This was, wasn't the first fist that he heard. And, and he, he gave me, he gave me permission to be right where I am right here, right now. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, 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 like he, he's, he's like, he's like, Chris, you know, here's what I mean. You know, he, he saw that my reaction was really weird. Like this is okay. You know? And, uh, and we were, and we were walking through this park and there was an old, um, there was an old, uh, campfire spot, you know, with the rocks around in a big circle and somebody had burned a campfire there the season before. So, and he, and he points to it and he goes, he goes, you, 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 you see, you see that old campfire? He goes, he goes, I'm going to liken it to this. Um, I believe you were an alcoholic before you picked up a drink. And what that looked like was the coals were red and, you know, you know glowing, and, and, you know, the glowing coals. And your first drink, it was like taking a can of gasoline and throwing it on those coals. And what happened was the flames just just, you know, went up into the air. They burned you and they burned anybody that you had near you. But he goes, but he goes, but he goes, Chris, listen, you've just made a serious effort at change. You've made a serious effort at becoming a better person. You know, it's time to start lightening up on yourself. And when I walked out of that park, John, 
my head, I'm not saying my head was held high, but I was able to look you straight in the eye. You know what I mean? It wasn't bowed down anymore. And that was a significant experience I had in my, in my first fist. I've done about seven or eight of them over the years because, because I, I believe that, you know, I'm, I'm not great at doing step 10 and 11. I'm not perfect at it and things will slip by. And every once in a while, a house cleaning is in order. Um, and I'll do another f- four and five. Um, and how I, how I recognize that a house cleaning is, is, uh, <laughs> is needed is I start to get cranky. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Oh like yeah. Things start to bug me. People start to <laughs> bug me. Traffic starts to bug me. My boss starts to bug me. And, and, and that's, that's the warning sign for, Hey, you know, it's time to, uh, it's time to renew, uh, your experience with step four and five. So I'm looking for it right now. Uh, I think it's on page 76. There are what they call the, or what is referred to as the fifth step promises. Uh, And I was going to read this part because I love them so much. Um, If I could find them. Do you know where that is? What page is that? 70. Yeah, it's it's like 75. Um, Sorry, folks, while we uh, struggle for this. So. We so here here's the instruction for step five. The spiritual life is, is is a life of economy. Okay, I always thought I needed to be reading the Course in Miracles or, you know, doing you know in depth spiritual Zen studies or something. Well, well, what Bill Wilson has given us is something so incredibly simple. Listen to these instructions, and right after the instructions are the promises. He says we pocket our pride and go to it illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the, of the past. That, that's the instruction, right? Mm-hmm. And then it says, once we have taken this step with holding nothing, we are delighted. We can look the world in the eye, which is exactly what happened in May. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. That was a specifically wonderful promise for me because I couldn't stand to be by myself. I would come home. Now, I couldn't have anybody near me, John, because I was such a, a raging drunk, but, but I couldn't just sit still and quiet. I, I would, I would come home with the bottle of bourbon. I'd pour out the bourbon. I'd turn on the TV. I'd turn on the stereo. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be practicing uh, guitar scales. I'd be reading a book. You, you know, all at the same time, right. just just to try to escape me, you know. So so being alone at perfect peace, I love doing one thing. You know what that is? What? Nothing. <laughs> uh, you, you ever just sit on the couch yeah. and sp- stare into space? You just yeah. do. Listen, there's something. There's there's spiritual virtue in nothing. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not saying the lazy kind of nothing, you know, but I, but I mean, just, just taking the, taking time out and, and settling way down and, and, and being alone at perfect peace and ease is an incredible promise that our fears fall from us. So that anxiety that I was telling you about that, that made almost everything hard for me to do, uh, started to fall off me. It didn't disappear. I just started to be able to do more and more things that I should be doing without feeling, you know, toxically uncomfortable. Uh, we begin to feel the nearness of our creator. Uh, we may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we, we begin to have a spiritual experience. So our spiritual experience begins with step five, right? And, and this is at least, you know, if you're if you're a big book person, you know, that's basically what it says. And, and it certainly happened with me. I came out of that park, a different person, you know, I didn't even know it at the time, but if I look back on my life as stages of Chris's life, I jumped a stage after I did that fifth step. And I was in a different stage of life. Not you know, a- Chris, there's a lot of, and you hear this all the time as well. A lot of people come into the room 
and they'll say that they they felt part of once they did the fifth step. It's not like anybody had shoved them away. And, and I think what they're starting to say is what you just read there is that they, but now we have begun to have a spiritual experience. I think that's what happens with internally within people. They feel more connected. They feel like they're on their way to their own spiritual experience, and they're going to be able to uh, dive into that further. Yeah, it says uh, the feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. And I knew by the time I did a fist step, I wasn't drinking today or tomorrow. You, you, you know, I knew that. Um, we feel that we're on the broad highway walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Now, Bill uses a lot of fluffy language. Okay. <laughs> he was a, he was a lawyer and he never outgrew that. Even in some of his, some of his last writings, he was, he was, Fluffy and verbose, right? Yeah. The broad highway walking hand in hand with the universe, you know, <laughs> whatever. How, you know, how I see that is uh, I'm starting to live a spiritual life. And a spiritual life is different than a life based on toxic self-awareness, mm. which is how I lived as an alcoholic with that toxic self-awareness. So, so I'm starting to recognize that there are people I can help. Um, I make it a part of my feet moving to help other people. It's not even, it's not an agenda. It's not, you know, it's not a list that I check off. It's, it's just part of my operational methodology to, to help people. Um, I went into work today and I didn't even have to go in. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. That's just like normal for me, right? Um, the neighbors next door weren't feeling really good. I went and got them uh, both a COVID test. I, that's just kind of what I did today. And, and so much of my active hours are not just about me. They always used to just be about me. So, so much of my activity today is is about others and that happened organically it wasn't it wasn't like i you know i i want to i want to be you know dudley do right or anything <laughs> it was just more of an organic shift in uh in in you know how i how i approached life there's another line from the big book here. It's on page 74. By the way, for those, I don't know if we made it clear enough a second ago when we were looking for it, but it was page 75 where you can find those big book promises. But on page 74, it says, the rule is uh, with the fifth step is that we must be hard on ourselves, but always considerate of others. Talk about that, what you think that means. All right, so... <coughs> All throughout the steps, we need to be hard on ourselves, considerate of others. With the amends, we need to be hard on ourselves, considerate of others. We're, we're starting to become considerate of others. <laughs> you know, like, like alert the press. <laughs> Chris is considerate of others now, you know? And, and so, so that's all a point of how we approach the, the spiritual mechanics of these steps. So, so in the fourth step, it says, putting out of our minds the wrongs others have done, done to us. We resolutely looked at our own mistakes. Where have we been at fault? So, so right then and there, I need to shelve all the wrongs and all the harms that, that I believe have been done to me because I'm now going to be looking at things with a different pair of glasses. I'm going to be looking at things like, how did I impact the situation? Where did I set the ball rolling? What mistakes have I made? What, what harms have I done? How have I mistreated people? That's how I'm going to start looking at things rather than burning up with resentment because I didn't get what I thought I deserved in this world. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you were to kind of like, like put a bow on this now, like in terms of the fifth step, what you think about the fifth step, why it's important. I know you've talked about a lot of that already, but there are a lot of people out there uh, who, well, first of all, they, 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 there's a lot of people who listen to this podcast who have never been through the 12 steps at all. 
Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people who I'm sure are going to be listening to this. They're kind of stuck at the fourth step and the fifth step and they're hemming and hawing and they're thinking about, you know, what, you know, do I really want to subject myself to this? And, you know, I, I like you have taken a, many fifth steps. They're all the same, but there is something internally within us that just kind of holds us back from not wanting to move forward sometimes and get this work done. And I don't know if there's any, I, I don't know how to get them over the hump. All I know is that, you know, when we go to meetings, we sure experience strength and hope. So that's what I'm looking for is your experience, strength and hope to say, hey, this worked for me. You know, you may want to consider it too. So, so inherent in alcoholism is, is a reluctance to engage in this spiritual way of life. But we see it with everybody we sponsor, we experience it ourselves. And the, the, the best way I could describe that is what we're really up against is a toxic experience of self-consciousness. And this self-consciousness, we, you know, we're bought into this, this belief system that comes out of uh, our habitual, uh, you know, seeing things from a selfish lens. Now, now what these steps do is they pull us away from that self-consciousness. So, so there's a line in, there's a line in the four step that, that says, uh, you're not going to be able to get rid of your selfishness without God's help. So I believe you're not going to be able to, to overcome the thing that is really causing your suffering, this conscious experience of self. You're not going to be able to overcome it by willing it or trying to outsmart it or just trying to remember not to be selfish. Now, you know, we've tried all those things a hundred ways from Sunday. These particular spiritual exercises are what move us away from that to a place of, of, uh, of compassion and charity. And it's the exercises that bring about the change. So, so you look at these exercises and you're, 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 you're wearing the, the pair of glasses that say self on it. And, uh, and, and, and you don't, you don't want to do it because it, 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 you know, it, it's, you, you see it as, as, as like a, a, a type of destruction of part of you. And, uh, I think that's deep down what, what makes us balk. So, so if there's anybody out there that knows they should do a four step, knows they should do a fifth step, haven't been able to do it, understand that it's your alcoholism that's convincing you not to do it. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the areas of self that have defeated you that are continuing to defeat you by, by finding ways not to do this step work. And if you want a solution to alcoholism and you want recovery, if you want what we have, you'll need to do what we did which is address all of these 12 steps. And, and I don't care why you do it. I, I, I don't care if you do it to be a great AA. I don't care if you do it because you're sponsoring people and you feel stupid that you haven't done it. So you got to do it because you're going to, you're going to ask them to do it. I, I, reasoning doesn't even matter. I, it, what matters is actually taking these, these exercises because there's promises after every one of these exercises. The, these action exercises uh, that are promises that you're you're going to want to have, you're going to want to experience, right? And you want to be thorough and honest. And and uh, you know, we didn't even really talk about some of the particulars of it. But for those of you who are listening, who may not have uh, not have a, like any sort of background with the steps at all, basically what you're doing is you go in and you list your resentments. Uh, which Chris talked about, your fears, and then you talk about your sex and relations part. And then on that fourth column, or some people say it's not a column, it doesn't really even matter, but but you have to write down, uh, uh, well, you don't have to, but it's expected to write down what my part in is, is in this. And that's yeah. what Chris has been referencing pretty much this whole time is that fourth column and looking at our part. You know, for many years uh, prior to about, the early seventies, um, 
people were used to doing four steps as asset liability lists. Okay. And they were, and they would do these lists with their sponsor. The sponsor would help them identify character defects. They'd help them identify some of the, some of these things that were defeating them. And, and, uh, and it was only until, you know, the Joe and Charlie's and, and, and people like that that came along that said, Hey, why don't we actually do it, you know, according to the way Bill put it in this book. And so around the 1970s, people, people became what I, what I would call, you know, fun, fundamentalists as far as, uh, paying strict attention to the instruction details in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous. And, and, you know, that's, that's what I have, uh, become a proponent of because that doing exactly what the book says, um, has led to an unbelievable change in me, an unbelievable quality of life that I never could have experienced, you know, trying to figure it out myself. So, so, so again, um, you know, do this step work. It, you, you're going to think it's stupid. You're going to think it's not going to work. You're going to think, you know, that was 1939, a bunch of guys wearing suits on, you know, on Saturday, you know, you know what I mean? Wearing hats. Nobody wears hats. You, you know, you're going to, you're going to think all that stuff. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is alcohol, alcoholism hasn't changed in thousands of years. It hasn't changed. And so if you find a recovery program for alcoholism, it's, that's, that's going to work whether it's 1939 or whether it's, uh, 2024. Uh, it, it's, it's going to work and do yourself the favor of taking these steps. You, you know, you, you, you have been subject to King alcohol, denizen of his mad realm. <laughs> you, you know, how about, how about taking some simple spiritual exercises to, to get some freedom and some power in your life? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, don't you think deep down you deserve to have a, have a really, really good life? Yeah. Uh, and, and the I, other, I, Oh, go ahead, Chris. No, no, you go ahead. The other piece that is uh, important at this stage is this this step, well, the fourth and the first, fifth step really serve as a launching pad into the, to the rest of the steps. In other words, you know, what you experience by writing all that down and talking to your sponsor or talking to whoever you talk, you know, you're going to use that list again when you get to the uh, ninth step. And then you're going to continue to do the exact same thing, really, in a in another form in the 10th, 11th, and 12th step. So it's it's all... It, it it all builds on each other, um, but it's very important as a launching pad into the rest of the steps. It's all deep, deep self reflection, but it's also self escape. You, you you know what I mean? Like like you can go to therapy and you can get really really deep. You can be Woody Allen and you can go to therapy for fifty years, and you'll have a great idea of just all the crazy mechanisms within your character, right? That are causing you problems and still be miserable. <laughs> knowing, knowing is the booby prize. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing with recovery is you get to uncover, you get to discover, and then you get to discard. Right. You get to discard these things that aren't working anymore. That's right. Ah. Uh. I love it. Okay. So that, I think that's a great pace to let off uh, and we'll schedule some more time with you and start talking about some more of the steps. And uh, I am going to go ahead and read from page 164 of the big book to wrap us up here. It says, abandon yourself to God as you understand God, admit your faults to him and to your fellows. That's what we've been talking about here today. It's just another way of saying the fifth step. Clear away the wreckage of your past. We'll get into that next. Give freely of what you find and join us. We shall be with you in the fellowship of the Spirit, and you will surely meet some of us, like me and Chris S., as you trudge the road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you until then. Once again, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on today. As usual, it's always a uh, enlightening and a lot of fun. Good to see you. Good to see you too, John. As 
Always, we do not want you sharing your toothbrush, but we would love for you to pause your device and share that episode with another friend or family member. It may be just what they need today. It's always good spending time with Mr. Chris S., and we will have him back on in the near future uh, discussing uh, step six, I'm sure. Uh, now, on to a little bit of listener feedback. Chase, Chase Z writes in via his mother, Kathy. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And the, uh, the letter says, or the email says, uh, John, this is Kathy Z. I am sending this to you on behalf of her son, Chase Z, who is incarcerated in the Buster Cole unit in Bonham, Texas. And the, the email says, John, my name is Chase Z. I am currently incarcerated in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I wanted to send you a brief email through a loved one, his mother, on the outside to express my gratitude for your podcast, so to speak. I listen to an episode every day, and I find myself on my bunk laughing, crying, and hanging on to every word that you and your guests share. A big thank you is not enough. I, of course, have had challenges with my incarceration, and I allow my alcoholic brain to get the best of me at times, but your podcast grounds me and brings me back to the peace and serenity that I so desperately need. It's like all of us, Mr. Chase. I get it. He says, I recently celebrated two years sober. Good for you, Chase. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. He says, I am working through the steps of my sponsor, and I've gotten further in the program than I ever have before. I know in all my heart that there is a success and a better life for me through the steps of AA, uh, through the steps and in the AA rooms. When, when I am not on the phone with my sponsor, I am listening to Sober Speak and the podcast uh, will be very much in my program beyond these walls. Once again, thanks for all that you do. Best, Chase Z. With Chase and your mom, Kathy, thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, you know, um, every once in a while, I get one of these days where I'm thinking of myself a lot. And as you say, Chase, uh, my alcoholic brain takes over and... Uh, but then I get notes like this, and it, it, it redirects my day. It gets me focused on doing the next right thing. And I'm, I'm so glad that you wrote in, Chase. Uh, keep us posted. Thank you very much. Anthony writes in, and Anthony says, Hi, John. I am in current long, I, I'm in a current, I'm currently in a long term treatment program. I have one month clean as of yesterday. Good for you, Anthony. He says, I'm struggling with self guilt right now and hopelessness about seeing my son ever again. I've done a lot of damage and really destroyed my marriage. I'm now divorced. A friend of mine here at the rehab told me about your podcast, and he has listened to over 600 stories twice over, and it really helped him stay clean. I have listened to the story with the woman who put money in a coffee can to save up for the Harley bike. <laughs> Very inspirational. Thank you. I think that was Deb H., but I'm not completely sure. Well, Anthony... um, there's very few people, and you'll hear this all the time, that come into Alcoholics Anonymous uh, or any sort of 12-step program on a winning streak. Uh, and there's a lot of self-guilt and a lot of hopelessness, uh, and marriages are destroyed, and sons are you know, taken away, children are taken away. But I can also tell you that I've witnessed hundreds, thousands, I, I, I don't I don't even know how many times uh, um, their fortunes change. 
maybe fortunes change isn't the way to phrase it, but uh, I've seen people come in, they put in the work uh, as a, it gets said in our group a lot. And and, and I'm, I don't know if this is all over the nation or not, but in our group, it, uh, we like to say, uh, and I, and a gentleman named Tim F actually made this popular in our group uh, and some other people, but they always say, uh, if the house is on fire, paint the fence. In other words, it may not make a lot of sense, but just keep doing what you're told to a degree, right? Uh, and uh, work the steps, do what they say to do, and watch things change around you. And I don't know how it works, but I know it does work. Thanks for writing in, Anthony. Lisa writes in as she says, good afternoon, John. Makes me think of that. <clears throat> Remember that, uh, good afternoon, Vietnam. <laughs> no, not good morning, Vietnam. The whole Robin Williams uh, <laughs> movie. But anyway, good afternoon, John. She says, uh, Lisa says, I live in Crystal River, Florida. I am a native California. Californian from Salinas County uh, by Monterey. I got sober there in on oh one ten of zero zero, so uh, of the year two thousand. Um, I was twenty nine and a half. I found Sober Speak by connecting with a new sponsor in California who helped start the Love and Service Group in Pleasant Hill, California and uh, attends the primary purpose group in Dublin. The Love and Service Group uh, has a hybrid meeting on Sundays that she attends, and she suggested I attend on the 12th because there was going to be a great speaker named Jimmy D. Oh, yes, Jimmy D. She said, I was curious about him, so I went and Googled or YouTubed his name, and I found him on your platform, Sober Speak. I proceeded to save five of his recordings in my email, uh through your links to listen to them while I was out and about. I saw Jimmy D last night and it was wonderful seeing him uh, after hearing five talks that you had done with him. I also have listened to Reno John, uh, who is also great. And now I'm listening to many others, including Cliff and his wife and the family afterwards. Of all the platforms I have uh, been led to, Sober Speak is my go-to. I just love your personality and approach and laugh. Well, thank you. She says, uh, in my years of recovery, I have discovered so many great teachings. I love Dave F. from Texas and Mark H., recordings, and many others. Uh, I was only in my 23rd year, and, I, and when, I, when I was introduced to the Three Legacy Sponsorship, I had many years of sobriety, and I was pretty crazy not working a sobriety. I am so grateful that I did not pick up. Now my spirit has woken up again to the excitement of this beautiful life as a sober woman who is an AA member in good standing with a home group, a service commitment in my home group, sponsoring and learning the traditions and concepts. God is so good to me and to us, and I want to honor him with continued desire to learn and help others. Thank you so much, John, for all you do and for the awesome speakers you have on your podcast. Gratefully, Lisa R-B. She's got her whole name there. But uh, you, uh, anyway, thank you, Lisa, for writing in. Uh, God bless you. And uh, I am so happy that you let me and uh, our guests be a small part of your journey, journey in, re in recovery. Thanks a lot. Uh, and finally, Alex DMs on the Instagram. And he says, thanks so much, John. I love your podcast. It's a huge part of getting me into it. Was, it 
oh, it was a huge part of getting me into the rooms. Oh, that's great. And the shows have helped me so much in my recovery. I'm 110 days sober and I just finished step for God bless you, John, and Sober Speak. Well, right back at you, Alex. First of all, congratulations on the, by the time you hear this, hopefully it's more than the 110 days, but nonetheless, um, uh, congratulations on the 110 days, but God bless you also. Uh, I appreciate it so, so much. All right, everybody, that one right there is another episode in the can, if you will. And keep coming back. It works if you work it. May God bless you and keep you until then. I take this one week at a time. I hope to be back next week and uh, be putting an episode out there. You never can tell what's going to happen just in case I don't make it back, (laughs) which I plan on. Uh, Love you guys. And even if I do make it back, I still love you guys. I was praying for y'all this week. I do just every once in a while. I, I I just I just sit down and I um you know you never really know exactly who's listening, why they're listening, uh, what their motivation is, where they are if if they're kind of in a happy, joyous, and pl- free place, or you know they're more going through some big struggles in life, or if they're just kind of neutral. Uh, just never know, and so. And then I'll get, oh gosh, letters like I just read you, you know, from Chase and, and, and others. And, and, and it just makes me realize that, you know, you just do the work, you just do the next right thing and kind of let God control the outcome. Anyway, God bless y'all. Love you. Bye-bye.